We've enlarged our most famous miniature by 4500% and made it life size. Hello everyone, I'm Thiago and today we have a slightly different video for you, showing the steps we went through to create a unique piece full of history for loot. As the first file made freely available to the community, U10 should now be on tens of thousands of shelves around the globe. For those who don't know Loot's history yet, in just over a year and a half of existence, we have grown a lot and moved to a new office to accommodate a larger team and better serve our customers. And there's nothing better than entering a new space and bumping into this icon of the company. The idea of printing a very large piece may have crossed your mind at some point, especially if you saw our last video in the 3D printing series, How to Scale Up Your Miniatures, link in the description down below. But there's always the question of how will the final result look like? Will it demand a lot of material? Long machine times? And how to finish it to have an amazing result? In this video, we will show you our step-by-step -step on how to make this fascinating statue, the amount and types of materials used, and everything relevant to make this project a reality. As you know, Loot always uses resin printers to print all miniatures, including the largest statues. But building something this big is a little more complicated. That's why we chose to use the 3D printing FDM technology, with a printer that has an area of 40x40 40 40 in X and Y and 50 cm in height in the Z axis. After defining the size of the Uten, we had to increase the scale of the 32mm model by 4500%, and our beloved character ended up with approximately 1m and 30cm tall from head to toe and around 160 counting up to the highest part of the hammer. We planned the necessary cuts from the file to be able to print the parts on the FDM printer. There were only 36 parts created from the original design, so that it used the minimum amount of supports possible and generated better quality in each part. As we planned to make the post-processing with a surface finish on the parts, we prioritized the printing speed and changed the printer nozzle to 1mm and layers from 0.3 to 0.5 mm thick, with two parameters trying to minimize the use of info and supports on parts. The beginning of this 3D printing process is similar to the resin one, with the slicing of the parts in a software, in this case Simplify 3D, where specific profiles were made for each part, and where we varied the percentage of infill and the quality of the part according to the complexity of the piece. The printing itself happened on this FDM printer, Core XY, that uses plastics in filament formats, melting and depositing each layer of the object. We use this PLE filament that allows greater dimensional stability and low warpage, which would later facilitate assembly. The software gave us an estimated time of the printing for each part, adding everything up to around 260 hours. The smallest part took 3 hours and the largest one took around 18 hours. A very quick time for this part size, but thanks to the white nozzle, it was possible to complete it all in just 2 weeks. Just so you can have an idea, let's make a comparison of how we reduce the printing time with changes in configuration and nozzle. Using standard settings of FDM printers, Uten's hammer would take about 46 hours for the single part, but in the way we did it, the time reduced significantly to 8 hours. After printing, the process of finishing the surface started and the result we wanted was a completely smooth piece, to simulate, in the end, an incredible painting technique. We first removed all the supports, and using a micro grind with several different bits, we started the surface finish, sending out the areas that were left with flaws. An orbital sander with sandpaper between grids 60 and 150 was used to speed up the manual process, which would be done in flatter areas. The micro grinder with grid 60 sanding bits and diamond bits performed very well to eliminate faulty parts. But since PLA plastics melt at a low temperature, just the friction between the sandpaper and the plastic is enough to melt the material, so you must be very careful and sand slowly and shifting the sanded location often. First, we worked on the parts individually because it's easier to handle, taking the opportunity to sand and leave the outer surface of the character more prepared. There were three types of putties used and we still use some UV resin from 3D printers to help with the finishing. 
we spent a total of one can of polyester putty, which is the kind that dries quickly with the catalyst and is very soft to sand. We also used a quick grey putty that dries with air, just to eliminate small imperfections, and another can of plastic putty that served to fix some tubes to the bottom of the statue. Eventually, it's time to join all the parts. In this PLA material, the super glue works perfectly, and for such a big piece, almost 4 complete 20 gram tubes of glue were used. A very interesting technique to glue quickly when there are spaces between the pieces is to use baking soda with super glue, which instantly solidifies the glue, facilitating this type of assembly. But we must be careful because of enemies alignment, they can be the beginning of a big headache. By keeping it cool and testing the fits before, it wasn't difficult to execute this part. All the seams between the pieces needed to be filled with polyester putty and sanded. Just remember that this is a constant process. Putty, sandpaper, putty, sandpaper. Until you're satisfied with the final result. And this part, sandpaper grid 40 to 150 were used to sand quickly. And grid 240 to 320 to generate a smoother surface. During this process there are still some areas that need sanding, and maybe even using a little quick drying putty for finer correction. But as plastic putty and resin have different colors, it is a little difficult to identify small flaws. To visually guarantee the quality, we apply some grey primer that helps us in the process of covering imperfection and facilitates homogeneous surface visualization. This is a long cycle if you want to do it perfectly. The process of sanding and applying more primer, sanding and more priming seems like an endless one, but for a perfect result is an essential process. Keep going until you are satisfied with the results. So, to avoid leaving any marks from the thick layers of printing with filament, we use the polyester resin that is normally used with fiberglass. That served to create an outer shell, making the surface much smoother. We use a few layers of this resin over the entire surface basically using a brush with soft bristles and mixing the resin little by little so as not to waste it. Don't forget that after this resin receives the catalyst, we have less than 5 minutes for it to start hardening. This process took just over 1 liter of resin, 2 brushes, 2 mixing pots, thinner and paper towels to keep everything clean. When we were sure the pieces were good, we went on to the next step, which is to apply the primer on the entire piece and because of its ease of use, we prefer to use spray paint. We spent almost 10 cans of automotive primer split across all steps, and at least 5 cans went into applying a consistent final coat across the whole surface. Where we were satisfied with the result. We attached Yuten's trunk with his legs, which were separated to facilitate the transport and handling process. We finished the seam, and then there was more sandpaper, more putty, and more primer. To perform the next step of metallic painting, we decided to use a black background throughout the piece, and approximately 2 to 3 complete coats were applied using black automotive spray, emptying a total of 6 cans of paint. 
We also added some final touches, using grit 400 sandpaper to have a perfect surface ready for the painting step that Marcia did. We wanted a metallic paint style, with the patinated look of a bronze statue, some aging details, not so perfect and polished, as if time had already exerted its effects on the piece. For this, Marcia started painting freely, using colors such as green, brown, beige and orange, without much order or precision, as these colors would only appear in the lower layers of the metallic paint in the future. In this stage, there are about 5-6mm pots of acrylic paint and three types of wider brushes with soft bristles. After drying the acrylic paint well, we start the metallic paint and tested it with the airbrush, which left the paint smoother, but we decided to use a wide brush to speed up the process for such a large piece. We managed to create an interesting texture with the brush bristles, that generated more realism when it came to simulating metal. Now, the cool part of this painting was that before this metallic paint, we use a product that helps to peel the paint, thus facilitating the process to scrape the metallic paint in some areas, revealing below the brown, beige and orange green used in the start. After scraping some areas of the metallic layer, we used bitumen, a liquid with a very strong smell even when diluted with turpentine. We had to use appropriate mask and safety equipment, but the benefit was this dark and more aged appearance, creating more depth to the surface. Finally, to enhance the metallic color, a golden paste and pale gold color was used with the dry brush technique, highlighting some areas where the light should reflect more. finish off with a microfiber cloth 
We polished this metallic paste and helped to guarantee the final shine that Reese has. This was an amazing project that got the whole loot team excited to see the full-size miniature. If we can even call it a miniature now. Despite being a file created to be a mini, it was possible to greatly enlarge the model without losing quality to obtain this result. Now, have you ever seen something like this? We are creating new content every day for you to learn more and more about painting, printing, 3D modeling, finishing parts, work safety, and even how to make a giant Uten. So, we'd like to know what other content you've never seen before, but we'd love to see about this universe of ours. So, if you like this content, leave a like, subscribe, do all of that YouTube stuff, but also leave a content letting us know what you'd like to see in the future. Oh, God damn it! Who the hell left this here? Jesus. <laughs> okay, someone's gonna pay for this.